Well, today on the bench we have something rather interesting. This is a 27-inch Neotech NT-500DX. And I can honestly say this is the first time I've ever even laid eyes on one of these. And basically what this is, this is a digital monitor that rivals the Wells Gardner D9200 and the 9400. And I say rivals, but I, this is by far and away much, much better than the D9200-9400. The 9400-9200 were actually way over-engineered, just unbelievably over-engineered, because this is the exact same thing and it's much, much more simplified. This is a tri-res monitor, meaning it has the ability to do CGA, EGA, and VGA, so 15, 25, and 31 all in one. And it's a digital monitor, meaning that it has no analog controls, just like the 92-9400, uh, that has the remote board for all your digital adjustments. This has no pots for color, no pots for position, no pots for screen size. It's all done digitally through the controls here. So it's a digital monitor. And uh, like I say, it'll do CGA, EGA, and VGA. But it took a lot of research to really figure out what's going on with this. This actually is a fully working chassis out of a fully working monitor. Uh, when I've, This is one of the seven that I just got from the Worlds of Fun Hall. Uh, the first one was the Henrix Polo that worked just fine. I did a cap kit rebuild and put it away. The second one was the video prior to this one, which is the second Henrix Polo from the lot that I had to do some repairs to because of the flyback and uh, what else was it? The flyback and the, the cap that exploded. So that was the second monitor of the 7. Uh, this is actually the fifth monitor of the 7 because the third one was a K7000 that I've got so many videos on already but I didn't do a video on because there really wasn't anything wrong with it. Uh, it, has, it had a bad voltage regulator that was causing some blooming problems, but I changed the voltage regulator, did the reflow and the cap kit and all the normal stuff, and bulletproofed all the solder connections and joints on R100 and such. And there really wasn't much to describe or to talk about on that one that was really uh, worth making a video on. So that was fixed and put away, and that was number four. Uh, number five was a Neotech 27-inch NT-2701 medium res. Uh, same thing with that. It worked perfectly. Uh, so I just capped it, reflowed it, and set it aside because it really wasn't worthy of making a video because it was fully working. Nothing was wrong with it. I could probably, I probably in hindsight could have at least pointed some things out on it and said, here's where you set your B+. Uh, it's only two, you only set that one to 100 volts versus 125, I think, on the regular Neotech. So I probably could have done a, a little tutorial video on it, how to set things, what it looks like, things like that. But it didn't really need any repairs, so I didn't really consider it a, a, a worthy candidate for a video. Maybe I'll go back and talk about it later, but for now, that's the first uh, four. Uh, only one of them needed, out of the first four that I grabbed at random from the lot of seven, only one of them needed actual repair work. The rest of them just needed rebuilds, reflows, things like that. Now, that's kind of the case with this one. This thing works perfectly, but I wanted to showcase this because I don't know if I'll ever come across another one of these to showcase on the channel. So I took it off the tube, it works in all resolutions, and I'll show that here momentarily. I took a separate video showing it working in all resolutions and how to change all this. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, it's just like any other standard chassis, but this one is digital with the digital controls and no analog adjustments. The neck board has no pots on it, no nothing. So uh, yeah, the most important thing to really know about this is that not only do you adjust all of your screen size, position, trapezoid, pin cushion, color, everything through the digital menu, um, the way you change the resolutions is rather tricky. So I'm going to explain that here shortly. Alright, so you have your normal CGA EGA connection here, uh, but this is designed to use composite sync. On any standard normal chassis, composite sync is actually pin number 10. But they have, instead of being uh, vertical, uh, horizontal, and then composite, they have vertical, composite, and horizontal. So I had a hell of a time trying to get this to sync because I didn't realize that the composite sinks actually pin number six and not pin number ten. So you have to have your connection set up like. Ah, uh, uh, I dropped all of my alligator clips. Okay, so I had this set up like this. like you normally would, and I could not get this to sync for my life. So after taking a bit more of a closer look at it, I realized, oh, well, composite sync is actually pin number six and not pin number ten. So when I move this over to here, 
ta-da, I got my sink. So it's important to know that if you have one of these and you're trying to use it and you're unfamiliar with it, you have to have the, the sink signal on pin 6 and not pin 10. Like a K7000 or any, any other Wells Gardener, well, I think any Wells Gardener, you can have the composite sink on pin 10. But for this particular monitor, for some reason, they put the composite sink on pin 6. So this is how you have to have it for your, st your standard and medium uh, CJEGA resolution. Now, that being said, I tried to run this on VGA and could not figure out why I wasn't getting a sync signal on VGA. Scratching my head, scratching my head. And then I noticed that there's a switch here. It's actually got a, a, a piece of glue on it, but it says um, switch 1, SW1 uh, and SW2. So you can see here, if I zoom in a bit more, we've got composite sync for switch 2, COMP, that's for composite sync. And over here you have uh, horizontal and vertical sync. So this is the default position this switch is in. Now when this switch is in this position here, VGA will not sync at all. You'll get no sync. You have to m remove this jumper and move it over to HV. And when you have it on HV, that allows your VGA to sync. So when you want to move it to VGA, you have to move this jumper from EGA CGA to VGA. And you have to move this jumper on switch number one from the left position to the right position then you'll sync up your VGA. And I'll also say that uh, 640 by 480 is the maximum resolution that this will handle. Uh, I tried 800 by 600 and it wouldn't sync. I brought, I brought it down to 640 by 480 and it synced right up. So there's, <laughs> you have to bear that in mind as well. So this switch here doesn't matter for VGA. You have to, I would just leave switch two and composite sync on the, the left setting because moving this around makes no difference on the, the uh, VGA setting. But if you were to move this back to CGA EGA and hook your connector back up, you'll not be able to sync until you take this off of here and move it back over to the left side. So it has to be left side for EGA CGA and the right side for VGA. So you move this down here, move this over to there, VGA will work, take this, put it back up there, take this, put it back on the left for up here. And that's how you get your signals. <laughs> so it was a bit convoluted for me to try and figure all that out, but. Um, so yeah, that's basically the, the gist of it. So there's nothing really left to do on this but to kind of do a cap kit reflow and then test it out one last time because it was fully working and I'll cut to it working here in a moment uh, before we do all the work to it. But there's two, I haven't been able to research exactly which one of these to adjust, but there's two separate B pluses here. There's a B plus here that says HV adjust. I don't know if that's high voltage or if that's horizontal or vertical, but I'm pretty sure it's high voltage adjust. However, there's a secondary one on the other side that says B plus adjust. Okay, so is this the B plus? Which I'm sure it is. If that's the case, what's this? High voltage adjust? I'm not sure. But because the monitor is working, and not only is it working, it has a fantastic picture in all modes, I'm not gonna mess with it. So, yeah, it's not overly burned up. It's got a lot of use on it, that's for sure. The picture tube has slight, some slight screen burn on it from not being uh, fully... Vert the vertical size was about, I don't know, half an inch on top and bottom, so you can see where the screen burn is for the original screen location. So if you stretch it out to the full screen, you can see kind of the black uh, mask from where it used to be. But that's not the end of the world on that. Uh, not the end of the world. So we got our controller chip for the uh, digital functioning. Might be worth re just reseating that, cleaning the legs, and putting it back in just for longevity's sake. Um, but this is the digital chip that controls all the on-screen display and everything. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's basic components. Uh, horizontal output transistors over here. Um, uh, this is probably a vertical IC right here on this heat sink. It's very similar to the D92-9400. But it's just a much, uh, over here is your uh, power IC. So if you turn it on and it does absolutely nothing or just uh, clicks on you, I'd say you probably have a bad uh, power, switch mode power supplied IC, just like the uh, Wells Gardner 74, 75, 2000, 5000, and even the Neotech 2515, all the Neotechs. Uh, all these chassis have this uh, eight pin uh, switch mode power supply chip. So that's common across the board. Um, you've got your, um, Isolation transformer built in, so you don't got to have an isolation transformer. Honestly, I'm not sure if it's this one or this one. I'm not sure, but either way, it's got one built in. 
So, yeah, that's not really much to it, just all the standard parts and any other chassis he has, but when it comes to the the simpleness of this compared to the 92-9400, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. I think the 92-9400 actually has like uh, 126 capacitors, whereas this one has maybe ha less than half of that, 50 or so. I got a cap kit for it right here from Arcade Parts and Repair, uh, Neotech 500DX. So, yeah, when it comes to the cap kit, this is <laughs> much better. I think this is much more a reliable chassis and easier to use and easier to figure out. Um, just much less of a headache when it comes to trying to fix when it, as compared to the 92-9400. Those are just big piles of junk. They work great when they work, but when they die, they're just really tough to troubleshoot. And I don't even offer repair services because A, I don't have a tube, and B, I don't want to try and beat my head against the wall trying to figure those out because they're so tough. But um, regardless, yep, that's how, uh, that's a general overview. That's how you switch all your resolutions. So I'm going to get cracking on this on the uh, cap kit and the reflow. And in the meantime, I'll show you the monitor in operation before I did any work to it, showing you how to change all the resolutions again and how the monitor looks in all the different resolutions, uh, 15, 25, and 31. And when I come back, I'll have all of this work complete. I'll show it off, then we'll get it on the tube and test it one last time. And we'll call it a quick, easy, uh, well, not a fix or repair, but nice, quick, easy rebuild. How about that? So here you go. Okay, so the monitor is operational and running, as you can see here, no signal. Uh, it cycles through this here, but it's sitting here kind of precariously off the edge of the bench because I have to be able to access the uh, interface board here for the resolution selections and jumpers and stuff. But you can see no signal. So it's set up right now on the uh, CGA EGA connection here because we're going to be using CGA 15 kilohertz standard res. So if we turn our, our test pattern generator on, there you go. Standard res 15 kilohertz. Works great. Uh, stupid refresh rate. And there you go. Now we can turn this off, switch it to medium res, turn it back on. Medium res. Now, we have to, for VGA, I have a monitor sitting here that's a little tiny desk monitor. Uh, <laughs> what did I say? I have a uh, laptop here. <laughs> uh, my brain's fried. Um, I have a laptop here that is uh, being forced into 640 by 480 via a program called QuickRes, and it's set up to run VGA, uh, duplicate the, the display out to here. And you can see we're still running medium res here, so if I turn it off, not that it needs to be off, but I turn it off, and let's, uh, just so we can see better, we'll disconnect this uh, test pattern generator here. All right, so now we have to move the jumper down here to uh, the VGA, from the EGA, CGA EGA connector down here to VGA. But that alone won't be enough to make VGA work. So now we're set up for VGA, but as we see here, it still says no signal. What we have to do is there's a little jumper here. It's going to be hard to see. But there's a little jumper there with the the uh, glue on it. You have to move, take that off, and move it over to the other position, right there. Now, miraculously, there you go. You can see there's the laptop. Here's this image, and if I move the mouse around, where's the mouse? It's right there on the vast. You can see I'm moving it around. So there's VGA. All three resolutions, good to go. Now, if we were to uh, plug, uh, let's see, I have a super high impact, we'll just use that. If I were to move this back to the CGA EGA connector and plug this back in with our sink on pin 6 and not pin 10, this is coming directly from here, uh, you can see it doesn't sink. So we have to take that jumper, it's going to be hard to see now, to take that jumper and move it back to the other position here. You can hear the resolution change. There we go. Now the jumper is on the other position. And we have sync again. So that's how you do that. So we have a fully functioning monitor. So now it's time to uh, get it all fixed up. And then we'll test it again after we get it all fixed up. So let's see how that goes. All right, and just like that, many hours later, <laughs> the, the uh, reflow and full cap kit is done. I did want to mention that I was going through various things earlier and talked about how the HOT was over here. Well, that was a blatant lie. The HOT is actually over here. 
I don't know what I was thinking. I just absent-minded refer to this as the HOT. It's not. HOT is actually over here. So, uh, but anyway. So yeah, the uh, cap kit's fully complete, including uh, neck board recapped and the cap on the uh, video board and all the caps on the main board. Everything has been all done and replaced. And I took my little brush here and wiped off all the dirt and the surface debris and got it nice and clean, looking good. So uh, yeah, full reflow, full cap kit, uh, a nice uh, gentle cleaning, rework on the neck board and uh, refloat some stuff here on the video interface board and got it all back together and it's basically done. So nothing left to do now but to put it back on the tube and give it one final run through and a final testing and we'll call it uh, a successful rebuild. So let's do that. Alright, back on the test bench here, post-rebuild, and we're starting off with the VGA. We've already gone over twice now how to set all that up, so we have VGA up and running here and selected, and there it is. Uh, mouse is right there, as you can see, moving around, and there you go. So we have a successful VGA selection. So now let's, um, uh, let's uh, disconnect this and move that jumper back over to where it needs to be over to there and then we will move this connector back to where it needs to be and then we'll hook our test pattern generator back up there we go and we are currently set, let's turn this off and put it to, okay, we're on standard res. Let's turn it on. There we go, there's standard. Turn it off, flip it to standard, uh, medium, I'm sorry, medium, turn it back on. And there's medium. So all three resolutions are good to go. Chassis is fully rebuilt, uh, minus the flyback. I let this run previously when I was doing initial testing before the rebuild for about half an hour, and the brightness and focus did not drift at all. So that's fantastic news because we are not going to need a new flyback. So flyback is good and reliable. Um, the rebuild is complete. We can actually show uh, this in action. So if we press the menu button, you can see this comes up with all the different options. We can scroll through degauss, exit, language, reset, on-screen display adjustment. You can move it around, position it where you want it to be, uh, color, balancing, uh, advanced select, pincushion balance, parallelogram, trapezoid, pincushion, rotation, just rotate the screen like you can move the yoke around uh, like it used to be, uh, vertical size, position, H size, H position, brightness, contrast, D guys. So yeah, and you just press up and down and it's like if we want to adjust uh, brightness, we'll select it and then press menu and menu will select it and we can press up and down for the uh, adjustment and when you get done you press menu again and then exit and what's cool about this is a soft start um, button I can actually press this button on the remote board and it'll shut the monitor off check this out one two three shuts the monitor off so there's a little remote on and off button <laughs> it's kind of handy um, let me press it again and it turns it back on there you go so, uh, yeah, we'll call this a success. So, wanted to talk about this a bit. And, uh, you know, the last couple of monitors uh, didn't need any repair work, just kind of an over uh, rebuild and caps and, fly and flybacks and re reflows and stuff. So, uh, this I think was number five of seven. We have a U2000 and a U5000 still, and that'll round out the seven monitors that I just got from the Worlds of Fun Hall. And hopefully uh, those have some type of issue that we can use to uh, document on the channel here. So Neotech 27-inch NT-500DX, here it is. This is what it entails. This is how to set all the uh, inputs up, how to select 15, uh, 25, and 31. Uh, the ins and outs, basically. Um, yeah, and it works great. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Stay tuned. Got, like I say, two more to do in this lot of seven, and there'll be more after that. So thank you very much. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you then.